Hey there guys, Godly Seafood here. I wanted to make a video in regards to pet hatching and pet making. I know a lot of people like to make pets and do stuff like that. And honestly, it can be a bit of a drag sometimes. It's super resource intensive. If you're new to the game, you're going to have a bit of a hard time, you know, just grinding and getting everything set up. But for the most part, everybody kind of knows or hears about sort of the basic stuff with pet hatching. If you want to level up a pet fast, you go farm couch potatoes and you create a couch potato farm. And then from there, basically, you just get yourself a ton of gold and you're going to be spending gold left and right to be able to hatch pets because pets are going to fail. It's an inevitability. And after that, you take whatever pet you have, hatch it with a pet that you want to have. And then from there, you get a baby. Now, getting into the philosophy of pets, I look at pets and their talent pools as literal pools of water. The pet that I have that I'm starting out with might be a muddy pool of water. It might just be a dirty pool of water. Whereas the pet that I want to hatch with in the kiosk or with someone who has good stats is basically like a pool of clean water. And every time I hatch with somebody, I'm basically pouring part of my cup of water and part of their cup of water into a third cup. And whatever baby comes out is the culmination of all of that water. Some people get super lucky and it just happens to be a complete clean of water with maybe a little bit of muddy water in it. Some people get super unlucky and 5, 10, 20 pets down the line, you still have a little bit of mud that you just can't get out. And you know, those selfish talents, those sticky talents, those talents that just will not get out of the talent pool. But yeah, that's basically how pet hatching works for the most part. So... The first thing you're going to need are gold and pet snacks. That's pretty obvious. You can't really hatch pets without gold or pet snacks to level up your pets. A lot of people don't like to garden. However, gardening is probably one of the best sources to passively get gold and pet snacks. So what I like to do for gardening is I like to have a couch potato farm or an evil magma pea farm. And then I'll also have a key lime farm. Key limes are great for making gold. With couch potatoes, you can also get treasure cards and pet snacks that you can sell for gold that are not mega snacks as well as get mega snacks however you don't have to just limit yourself to having a couch potato farm a really reliable plant are key limes they reseed they give you an extra seed multiple times throughout their life potentially and when you have 60 of them and you're gaining a ton and ton and ton of reagents pet snacks and key limes you can sell all of that stuff just for gold and have a little passive gold farm on the side. Right now, I've got all of these different plants that are just ready to be harvested. They're all good to go. I'm gaining additional pet snacks and you know regular gold on top of seeds that I don't plan on using. So I'll just sell all of those seeds and get a ton of gold from that. So what I like to do is I like to have an additional character. Currently, I have a level 45 balance guy on this profile who is not doing anything. I'm not questing on him. I'm not doing nothing with him. He's like a throwaway character. I'm He's waiting to be deleted because I have a, another balanced wizard who has surpassed him that I'm playing with friends with. So this is a great character to basically utilize while he's just sitting there waiting to be deleted, right? And as you can see, I've got multiple, multiple different pets on him waiting to get just get leveled up. Some of them I'm planning on just leveling up to get certain rewards from even though they've got trash talents. Other pets I have that I'm waiting to level up so that I can use for playing support or stuff like that. This one character has no purpose other than to level up pets. He gets 72 energy and then I just move all of my pet snacks to this one character. On top of that, on my other characters, I'll go and I'll utilize their gold. You know, I'll use my myth and utilize all of his gold so that I can make pets and then transfer them over before I've, I've even started leveling them up. That way I can you know, transfer all those pets over, transfer all of my mega snacks over to my one balance guy, and then boom, I have the ability to start breeding pets and making pets whenever I need to. On top of that, what I also like to do is I like to utilize potions. So if I go to my shared bank over here, I've got double pet XP potion. This allows me to double my pet XP. However, it only lasts for one hour. The interesting thing about this potion is that when you are not on this specific character, the timer does not typically go down. I have noticed that there is a 15 second uh, delay between you pressing, you know, play this character and loading in or going through a door. So you'll lose 15 seconds the more you swap between houses and realms and stuff like that. 
but for the most part, it is going to be receiving the maximum benefit it could possibly get in that one hour time period, simply because this specific character does nothing else other than make pets. And so what I'll do is I'll use my myth guy and I'll go over to him and I'll transfer over a ton of different pet snacks that I just buy from the bazaar. You know, I'll drain my treasury. I'll go onto my other balance guy and I'll see how much money he has. And I'll buy a ton of stuff from the bazaar because I don't plan on utilizing this character for gold or pet making. And I'll just buy stuff to then transfer over to my you know main pet hatching guy so that he can utilize some of that gold. And as you can see, with my gardening comes a whole bunch of extra pet snacks that I might not have even had. I know we get a lot of pet snacks and random stuff from just fighting throughout the game, but... Having an extra little farm where you can just have a ton of saved up gold in the form of pet snacks is totally worth it. It's basically like having a yacht worth $5 million ready to sell at a moment's notice so that you can have $5 million. What I'll do then is I'll go back to the main guy and I'll go back home, pick up all of those potions, all of those pet snacks, all of those mega snacks, and I'll go sell some stuff real quick. I'll make sure that he has max gold for whenever he's ready to actually do stuff. But just kind of in general, the idea is just have a way to get a bunch of gold over to that main character so that you can then take all of these like shot keys and pet snacks and go sell them all for gold. Just because it's going to be great having a character with close to max gold being able to hatch pets left and right and effectively utilize their time to where they're not wasting a ton of time on all of those potions and all of the timers just steadily going down. Like if I were selling all of this in the middle of the potions just to get to max gold, I'd be wasting so much time. So whenever I've got my dedicated pet making character a ton of gold, he's got a couple pets that he can work on that, you know, I want to get up for one reason or another, you know, I can then go and start making pets that I want. And yeah, since I'm close enough to max gold and this pet got Spell Defy rather than one of the talents that I wanted, I'm personally going to choose to go and hatch this pet again before I even have my potions going. So let's see. But from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my elixirs. You know, I'm going to pop my double XP and then I'm going to pop my crafting uh, benefit elixir. Make sure not to get rid of those. And boom, the timers are going. So, you know, let's on to the races. I've got my mega snacks here got a couple i'm gonna have to restock eventually but yeah let's just keep going and i choose to pop a double crafting uh elixir just because it'll give me some stuff that i want see now this pet has failed with defender's rampart that is a talent i did not want uh so yeah this this is probably a pet that i'll never level up again so let's go and open up this pet see if we can get you know a decent pet out of this open it up and because I'm not entirely too sure on whether or not it's going to be good, I've got these backup snacks. These snacks do 20 likes per use, so, you know, I'm going to be not getting my the best bang for my buck snack-wise, but I'm also not going to be wasting my time if I level this pet up and it just happens to fail and then I'm out of mega snacks. Like, Bulwark is pretty good talent. Sprightly, okay, Sprightly, that's a talent I didn't want. So, take this pet, boom, trash. He's a... Uh, didn't get what I wanted, although I was just going for a pet on that one specifically. This one, this is a pet that I'm also going to utilize for getting elemental and spirit tokens. So I would be leveling him up. But since I've got these these going, I'm just going to log off and boom, I've got potions going. I've got a couple pets in the works, but for the most part, this character is only going to be used for pet making and he's just going to sit there. The potions are no longer in effect. They, they stop as soon as I get to this screen. So from here, I'll just, I'll go play on my myth. So if you're curious as to how the math works on that, how long you'll have those potions, yeah, obviously they'll be there for an hour, but let's say you hop on that pet hatching character for two minutes a day, every day, and you've got pets coming in and out. You know, for the most part, you know, hypothetically speaking, you'll have at least two months worth of double XP on top of any double XP that comes you know, just regularly, if a double pet XP happens while you have an elixir going, the elixir pauses its timer, it stops while the event's going. That way you don't waste your elixir. 
But aside from that, you're essentially going to have that potion going for a month, maybe two months if you're just super quick on the draw every day. On top of having that double XP whenever you want it, your other characters can garden for you and get you snacks. So then you run over, grab those whenever you're low or whenever they're there. If you run out of pet snacks, you can literally just not go on that character and then come back to it whenever you have mega snacks. It's such a decent strategy, in my opinion. I'm surprised I don't hear more people talk about it. Like, this is almost a perfect pet, except for the fact that it got Defender's Rampart instead of Enfeeble. This is a good pet that I was able to make just from having those potions. Like, I failed a ton, and even then, on the very last iteration so far, it has failed again with Defender's Rampart, but I have another you know, month to go until I run out of double XP on that potion. I can continue making this pet as many times as I need till I get it right, whilst playing on my other characters when I want to and not losing out on timers or anything. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Hopefully you guys learn something from that. Uh, you know, pet making is, you know, just difficult in and of itself. You can literally use this to your own schedule make the pets that you want to make and with the resources and in the amount of time that you have and plan around it. Like it's a very flexible, genuine plan for making pets. No, I keep pissing.